working pretty well. Earlier in the uh, show, of course, we introduced uh, Roger. He's in the process of actually building a PC from scratch. We had all the parts on the table. Now, I noticed, Roger, you're keeping the parts on this on this bag. This is the bag the motherboard uh, came yes. in. Yes, and that's just because I don't want any stray uh, discharge static. Like this is an anti-static material. It's an anti-static bag. Yeah. And I normally leave uh, any any imprinted circuit boards on it, but I just left the drive on. It's a handy thing. Well, it's it, a handy don't thing forget, the drive has, you know, circuitry here. It has here, a logic so, board in it. So it can be, it can, sometimes the bottoms of hard drives are exposed, things like that. So it's this is a handy uh, little it's, it's staging It's a handy thing area. to do. And You've got the uh, motherboard in. Now, how hard was that to put in? Did you have to screw it in? How does that um, go in? Generally, uh, Beneath it, there's uh, little metal risers that you attach. They look like a little a socket. Right. And um, basically what they do is they elevate the board off the, the base of the case. And you basically what I did was, I used basically, <laughs> uh, is I attach one at four corners and one in the middle. So when I put cards in, I'm not right. pushing it it's straight. without with surface. It. So there's always support around it. So the risers are in the case, and then you put the motherboard on the riser, and then a screw goes through yes. the motherboard the, into the riser. The only thing to really watch out for, I'm going to flip this around real quick, is to make sure that this portion right here lines up, because some of the uh, ports uh, line up it this way. So if this doesn't fit, oftentimes the motherboard comes with its own. So you might have, have a to variety remove of this back, back panels. Yeah. Back planes. Yeah. Uh, to put in it. One other thing that I've seen people do that's a, a big risk is if you put risers in the wrong spots, you can short circuit the motherboard. Yes, so and they often, oftentimes they come with plastic risers that you put at those spots. Those are safe, yeah. Those are safe because you don't want a, a piece of metal touching the motherboard where there isn't a screw hole. And if you're really, really paranoid, you can actually buy non conductive washers that sit between the screw and the motherboard. <laughs> so the, you're doubly I've never safe used this. All right, so we got the motherboard Board mounted. In. It's nice and firm. You put the video card in. I, I noticed you've already card. connected many of the cables. I connected many of the cables simply because I need to get them out of the way. There's too many in the, uh, uh, in the way. There's one major power cable that supplies the motherboard right here. And now, this, you didn't forget the P4 cord, did, did you? I didn't forget it because because the P4 requires so much juice that actually not all you these a new... a separate cable Yeah, for there's it. a separate cable, and you got to make sure it plugs in, because although the computer will turn on, nothing's going to happen. That's what that son of a gun, Will Wheaton, forgot to do. That's that's what we... Blame I should him. say we forgot. Blame him. Uh, he's, <laughs> he's a nice guy. I can't blame him. <laughs> um, <laughs> Will watches, so we're just, we're just joshing. The only other thing I need to worry about is make sure none of these cables are touching the blades of the fan, yeah. or some way would obstruct good airflow in the case. Well, first of all, you get a nasty sound if you turn up the machine. Yeah, it's going to sound but like a baseball card in the spokes you, of your you bike. Also, in the worst case, strip off the uh, insulation there and short circuit. And stuff. that's not good either. Yeah. This is actually very clean looking inside. It is. The, and the case. Uh, I, one I minor thing is save all your ties because if you're using unused power tables, you don't want them to dangle. So right. you just want to wrap them up and get them out of the way. Okay. What more do you have to do here? Drives and. You've got one drive in. One drive. You're going to be a two. It's going to be a two. It's going to be drive? a two drive uh, thing just because I actually pre-installed the OS. Ah, uh, on okay. And this, uh, and I got the new 250 gigabyte Western Digital Drive. <laughs> and who, who why, why? Why not? I guess. Why not? So it's, are you going to put? You're going to have uh, 500 gigabytes, uh, half a terabyte of storage in yes. here. Yes. <laughs> why not? <laughs> why not? Why not? Is it whose machine? Who's getting this machine? This is no, a nice machine. No, and it's actually going to all the parts going to go back to right, the vendors. Right back apart, huh? Okay. But it's always mm -hmm. nice to play with new and stuff. And the last thing we're going to put in here is the Sony DVD burner. This is the uh, the really nice. We really it's, like this DRU you know, uh, 510. One note is I do not have a floppy in the machine because oftentimes all software these days come on a bootable CD. Right. I can boot from the CD, and since it's not only a DVD-R, it's also a CD-R, I can burn to it, so the floppy kind of loses its, its significance in the entire thing. You know, you could put one in, there's $12. You don't have to. Don't have to. That's All the my beauty drive. of building your own. Yeah. You get the choice, right? Yes. Right. While Roger works on the PC, you can find step-by-step -step instructions on building your own. You think you're going to make it? you got 17 minutes and 12 <sighs> seconds. Building your own PC. <laughs> I like to make him crazy. At techdv.com slash call for help. Do we have time for the call, or should we just move right on to our uh, Wild World Challenge? You want to do it? Sarah, who's on the line here? On the phone, it's Craig from Slidell, Louisiana. Hello, Craig! Hey, Leo and Roger. How's it going? Well, we're hey. doing great. What can we great. do for you today? Um, I finally got permission from my wife to buy a new computer. All right. And I'm looking at a modded system with a window and a light inside. Very cool. And some of the uh, upgrades I've seen are like round cable. Yeah, because that's going to look better in that. Mo Here, why don't you? Yeah, this is a rounded cable. Normally, the old style ID cables are these ribbon cables like this, right. and they, they, all they did is they just detach all of these and put them in a binding, and that makes a rounded cable. So, are there any? Um, is there any ill effects to? Yes. 
<laughs> Which there are. Well, the idea of a ribbon cable is all these wires are separated. In fact, on you'll see on the new Ultra DMA cables, they actually have double the wires because there's the, the data wires, the 40 data wires, and then 40 separating wires that are grounds. And the idea is when those wires are close together, you get crosstalk and interference from those wires. So you want to separate them. Well, what, what happens here? All of a sudden, you've got these all jammed together. So in theory, these could be slower or even could be unreliable because of that potential for crosstalk interference between the wires. However, I have to say my experience has been that if you get good rounded cables, you know, from a good company, yes, right. they're fine. They don't really, I, I've looked at some benchmarks and they, maybe they'll be a little slower, but I, I haven't had any problem. Have what's, you? What's not really. And get good ones. Yeah, you get good ones and make sure, um, you know, if you're really paranoid about it, just use one cable and don't have too many drives. Well, motion. that's the key. Shorter lengths, going right. to make it better. So the shortest length possible. Uh, and the, the, now on the upside, you're going to not only look better, but you've got better cooling because you've got airflow, much better airflow through the well, system than if you have all these jammed here, you, up. You actually yeah. have something where air can actually flow around. And, and, and these can get crimped easily, which yes. is just as bad, frankly, for data. So I would say go ahead, get the routed cables, especially on a nice modded box where you've got a window on the side and you really want to look good inside. Get, in fact, you can get them with LEDs in there and they all light up and stuff. And if you really want to be ahead cereal, of the curve, baby. get a serial ATA and the cables look like this. That Talk about rounded. That's and tiny. It's, and it's perfect. They're small. They don't get in your way. And you don't have to deal with a big bulky cable. Serial is faster because it, it, it has less interference uh, pro potential than these uh, parallel, parallel cables like this. So uh, that is really probably the ideal way to go. Those are much faster drives. Well, that sounds great. Hey, Craig, I thank you for calling. Thank you, Leo. Man, this is the geekiest call for help we have ever done, I believe. I in memory. I like it. Do you mind? I think it's fun. And if, you know, if you're a newbie, it, this is stuff... You don't have to understand all this or even know about it, but just stuff. You just sit, watch pretty cables, and eventually it's, you're going to go, oh, I remember hearing about Osmosis. that. And somebody's going to ask you a question and say, yeah, I know all about rounded cables, <laughs> and impress your friends. Coming up next, judging from the number of entries we received for the Wired World Challenge, you guys really want that beautiful main gear customized call for help PC. We've got two to give away, a Photoshop, and a lot more when we play our game right after this. Stay here.